Let's begin by importing the essential components from the 3JS library necessary to create our 3D scene. We will be making use of the general module provided by 3JS which we import using an asterisk, indicating that all exports from 3JS should be accessible via the 3 namespace. The scene is essentially a container that holds all the objects we want to render, like our skybox, any models or lights. Here we're initializing a new scene instance. Next, we create a perspective camera which simulates the way the human eye sees. It's characterized by four key values. The first is the field of view, here set to 75 degrees. This is the extent of the scene that's seen on the display at any given moment. The second and third values define the aspect ratio, which we set to the width of the user's window divided by its height, ensuring the image isn't distorted on different screen sizes. The last two numbers denote the camera's near and far clipping planes. These are the limits between which objects are rendered in the scene. The WebGL renderer is an interface to the WebGL graphics API, optimized for rendering our three-dimensional scenes. We set the renderer size to fill the entire window. Then, we append the renderer's canvas element to the HTML document, making it visible on the page. A cube texture loader object is created here, which enables us to load a set of images and use them as the faces of a cube, forming the backdrop of our scene. To simplify the image loading process, we set a common path for our texture images. By setting the path here, we tell 3JS that every texture we load using this loader will be found in the textures, skybox, directory. Here we're loading the six images that represent each side of the skybox. The letters P and N stand for positive and negative, while X, Y, and Z correspond to the axes in a 3D space. Thus, PXJPG is the image for the positive x-axis, and NXJPG for the negative x-axis, and so on. All six images will be wrapped around our scene to create an illusion of a distant environment. Once the cube texture is loaded, we can set it as the background of our scene. The skybox effectively becomes the far-end background of our 3D world. When we move the camera, the distant skybox gives the viewer the feeling of being immersed in a vast space. To bring our scene to life, we define the animate function, which will continuously update and render our scene. This loop is created using request to animation frame, which tells the browser to run this function before the next repaint. Inside this function, we would place any logic to update objects or the camera. Finally, we call the renderer's render method with the scene and camera as arguments to draw the scene from the camera's perspective. We then call animate to start the rendering loop.